Welcome to Inside Chips, the podcast that keeps you up to speed on the fast-moving world of semiconductors. I'm your host, Gregory Haley, Technology Editor with Semiconductor Engineering, and every week we'll bring you the breakthroughs, the deals, and the science shaping the chip industry. Welcome. Today is Friday, May 9th, and here's what's happening in the semiconductor industry this week. The U.S. government is rolling back a Biden-era rule that would have placed complex restrictions on AI and chip technology exports. Companies like NVIDIA are breathing a sigh of relief, according to Bloomberg, though the move introduces near-term uncertainty as firms await simplified guidelines expected later this year. Until then, exporters are navigating a murky regulatory environment. Proposed semiconductor tariffs could seriously derail industry growth. The Information Technology and Innovation Foundation warns that a tariff-heavy scenario might flip the sector's projected 9% growth for 2025 to a 20% decline. That could mean up to $300 billion in lost global sales, hitting U.S. competitiveness especially hard. Semi Europe is urging the EU to inject an additional 20 billion euros into its next long-term budget for semiconductor development. That would raise the total to 260 billion euros, aiming to reduce dependency on non-European suppliers and strengthen the continent's chip ecosystem. At the Cadence Live event this week, the company showcased new AI-powered engineering tools. Highlights include a supercomputer built on NVIDIA Blackwell systems, a novel AI coprocessor designed to complement neural processing units, and a multi-block, multi-user, agentic AI system-on-chip design platform. Chinese chipmaker YST Semiconductor is investing $100 million to build a new facility in Washington state. The move aims to deepen its relationships with U.S. customers while navigating uncertainty tied to the CHIPS Act and evolving international trade policy. That's according to reporting from The Oregonian. Plans to support power-hungry data centers with nuclear energy took a big hit this week, as executives at International Telecom Week say nuclear energy is still at least a decade away from powering data centers. Until then, coal and natural gas will remain the primary energy sources, an admission that may not sit well with clean energy advocates. That story from Broadband Breakfast. Global semiconductor sales reached $167.7 billion in the first quarter of 2025, up 18.8% from the same period last year. A nearly 45% jump in sales in the Americas was a major driver, according to the Semiconductor Industry Association. The SIA also endorsed the new BASIC Act, which would boost the Advanced Manufacturing Investment Credit from 25% to 35% and extend it for another four years. Photolithography materials revenue is expected to grow 7% this year, hitting $5.06 billion. EUV photoresists are the star of the show, projected to surge 30% year over year. That's according to TechSet, which says innovation in dry resist deposition, non PFAS materials, and regional supply chains will continue to shape growth through the end of the decade. IMEC and TNO have opened the Holst Center Photonics Lab in Eindhoven, Netherlands. The new facility will accelerate integrated photonics research for use in data communications, automotive systems, and healthcare. In this week's deep dive, Intel Foundry, TSMC, and Samsung Foundry are in a high-stakes sprint to deliver full 3D integrated circuits. These advanced chip architectures promise massive performance gains with dramatically reduced power consumption. Our special report examines the foundational technologies and the competition driving this pivotal shift in chip design. You can read the full story now at semiengineering.com. For more news on what's happening in the semiconductor industry this week, check out semiengineering.com and our Week in Review column. I'm Gregory Haley, and we'll see you on the next spin.